Genesis grooving to the funky tune. You too should be doing it at home. That funky tune means one thing, you're tuned into Expresso and it's time for our tech daily update that we bring to you every Friday where Tennis Janssen and Rensberg, our um, technical expert aficionado, brings us some really interesting, what he is finding most intriguing from the world of science, tech and the interwebs. Um, it doesn't get more interweb. First of all, welcome, buddy. Great Thank you very much. Um, let's chat about Facebook and F8. Does that mean F8 is the eighth F that we've had? No, it's, it's called <laughs> F8 every, um, every year. So it's their developers conference. And um, w let's not talk about everything they've done on the social platforms for now. Um, what is probably the most exciting uh, announcement for us consumers is VR um, and Facebook obviously owns Oculus, which was one of the pioneers in this space. What they announced is that wow. they're going to launch two new VR headsets. So there's the Oculus Rift S, which is essentially an update to the Oculus Rift, which is the one we've had for a couple of years. It's more powerful. Um, the controllers are a bit more intuitive and easier to use. It's like a Star, uh, a Star Trek phaser. Almost, yeah? almost, yeah. yeah. Wow. But the one we're looking at here is actually the Oculus Quest. So this is, um, this is Oculus's answer to some of the more, let's call it technically impressive VR headsets that have launched in the last couple of years. So this one doesn't need to be tethered to your machine at all. Um, and you also don't need to set up your play area with different sensors and different corners of the room. Essentially with the four cameras on the front of the Oculus Quest, um, it does all of that for you and it does um, kind of a dot matrix of everything around you, which is great because that means you don't need to set anything up. You can literally hand over to your friend in another room and it'll know exactly what's around wow. that person. And it adapts the games um, on the platform to, to fit into the space you're in. Can we get these here? No, right now? Uh, Pre-order, yes. Wow, how much do you think? Um, it's you know? $400, so um, it is, it is uh, Some in, in, the, in, the, in the same price range as, as other consoles, but I think they're going for a different audience here. Um, we've seen AI being used in a commercial space on a much greater level now, and it's very exciting, and I think that for, from a consumer-driven perspective, it can really streamline processes, and you expect the big guns, and we, we know Walmart had entered into a new yep. space last week, we heard about that. Uh, McDonald's have now launched their artificial intelligence uh, powered drive-through menus at 700 branches. What does it mean? Right, so they, they acquired an AI company um, a couple of months ago, and now they're, they're starting to push out the technology into some of their this branches. It's an American menu, right, Sam? We don't have that. We don't no, have we, we, no. <laughs> it's, it's slightly <laughs> different. <laughs> uh, but what they've done is essentially um, they're going to test this in about 700 branches in the States where they um, deploy the AI in the drive-throughs instead of having somebody speak to the customer and having to take their order. So this is obviously trying to uh, um, help them automate things, make things faster, simpler for the customer. And what the AI is going to do is um, basically predict what you want to order, depending on the time of day, maybe what else you've ordered. Um, how will, they will it recognize you via what, how will you learn? Literally it? just voice recognition. Wow. So it'll know from what you've ordered, what you're most likely to order with that. So then it'll give you some suggestions on the screen, um, or it'll tell you, listen, you, uh, you looks like you've got a kid because you, you, uh, you had a happy meal. Maybe you've got another kid, there's another happy meal. Something like this. Something, really something like that. So they're starting to test it to see if they can make, make things quicker and easier uh, for the And customers. we know that McDonald's are the, the, the masters of automation. They really have got the most incredible business model in that sense. Very quickly, um, Google uh, adding a new security feature that deletes your history. What, what is that securing us from? <laughs> well, you know, security, personal data security has become a very big a topical issue uh, throughout the world with the uh, issues that Facebook has had um, and Google also having some antitrust cases in, the, in, in Europe. Now, what they're saying is, look, they want to put uh, the customer's data at their control because they're saying, okay, so um, the legislation is starting to say um, the customer owns their own data. So what they're gonna allow you to do is, um, in a setting, uh, you can automatically delete um, all of your Google Maps, your search delete history. everywhere? Everywhere, not just on your devices, on Google servers as well. Um, that's a big thing. That's it's, a very you know, I'm just, it's a very big thing for Google because the data is their business. So to give this power to the customer is quite a positive step. Um, yeah, and I think in this world where, where users are needing more authenticity and you've seen what that's done to the Facebook model and where they are, that gateway that they've got to go through now, yep. it's a big thing and they might earn some massive respect and, and a brand loyalty through this that I, I think is irreplaceable in today's market. Dude, really interesting stories. Thank you so much. Thanks. I don't know if, like me, you're feeling a little bit hungry right now, um, but take that in mind that uh, technology is taking over that consumer space and you can let us know if there are any tech stories that have grabbed your attention, got your appetite, wet your appetite. Hit us up on our social media platforms.